morning. Welcome to 9th Street Missionary Baptist Church. Today our scripture will come from Psalm 61st. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the cover of thy wings. For thou, God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. Let us go to God in prayer. Our Father, we thank you once again this day for another day. Our Father, the Jordan heaven, my Father, your Father, how great thou art once again to be in thy presence. Heavenly Father, we come today thanking you for what you have done and what you continue to do in our lives. We thank you for watching over us, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the blessings of another day. We thank you for touching us and starting us on our way. Thank you, Father, for watching over us through the storms, through the night. Thank you for healing those that are sick. Thank you for being with those that are going through something. And, Father, thank you, most of all, for your Son, Jesus. Thank you for this day, Heavenly Father. Father God, we pray this day for our church. We pray this day for blessings seen and unseen. We pray today for our faith, Heavenly Father, strengthen it. Strengthen it like none other. We pray this day, Heavenly Father, that you be with our pastor, his family, and speak to and through him this day, Heavenly Father. We pray this day for churches under, opening this day under thy son's name. We lift up our sick and shut-ins of our church. We pray this day for our kids. We pray for families, our grandkids, our students, our instructors, our teachers, Heavenly Father. And Father God, we pray that you heal right now in our son's name. We pray this day, Heavenly Father, you'll help us tonight to get complacent in our minds and our thoughts, to be steadfast and stay with you in all that we do, Heavenly Father. Father God, we pray this day for our finances, our membership, and we pray that you continue to watch over us and protect us. Heavenly Father, we pray this day that you bless us. Bless us in all that we do, in our walk, in our talk. Bless us, Heavenly Father. But Father God, we come today understanding if you stop blessing us right now, we're more, more than blessed. Thank you, Father, for what you've done. Thank you, Father, for who we are. But most of all, whose we are. All children of thee. Bless this service this day. Have your way this day, Heavenly Father, in this day that the Lord has made. These things we ask in our son's name. Amen. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God 
Spirit pours from his key, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing, sir. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, you're in this midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, you're I worship you. If you believe that today, let me hear you say, Wait, baby. No. 
scripture for today simply comes from 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 10 and 26. I'm going to ask that you would share this live stream with someone, tag as many people as you can tag, tell somebody to come into the room because they need to hear this word on today. 1 Samuel 10 and 26. I want to thank all of you who are in the sanctuary. And once again, I invite you next week because I'm going to be back in the same place doing what God has called me to do again next week right here live from this sanctuary. And I invite you to come with your mask on and be prepared for worship. Listen, 1 Samuel 10 and 26. 1 Samuel 10 and 26. It says, Saul also went to his home in Gibeah, a company by valiant men whose hearts God had touched. I'm going to say that again. Saul also went to his home in Gibeah, accompanied by valiant men whose hearts God had touched. Just for a little while, my brothers and sisters, I want to speak from the subject title, 
a touch of God. A touch of God. A touch of God. Somebody says, what does that mean? What does that look like? It means that God is now at the center of your will and your being. It means that you have surrendered your life totally to him. How does somebody say to me, Reverend Carl, how does God touch you? And I think I must tell you on this morning is that he does so by influence of his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads us to the Word of God. And through the scriptures, God touches our hearts. When God touches you, bitterness, anxiety, and fears have to go away. I'm going to say that again for somebody that's in the room. Yeah. When God touches you, bitterness, anxiety, and fears have to go away. They can no longer stay in this place that has been touched by God. Habits and wrongdoings that were destroying your life, that has called you to fall away. Things you used to cherish, you now despise. Things you used to despise, you now cherish. When God touches you, he fills us, my brothers and sisters, with love and with peace. And though the storms may rage and winds may blow, your confidence should be in God's ability to control life's circumstances. I'm going to say it again. When God touches you, he fills us with love and peace. Though the storms may rage and the winds may blow, your confidence should be in God's ability to control life circumstances. I should have got an amen right there for you on social media because all of us need for God to control our life circumstances. It is this morning Samuel's son. His sons are corrupt judges. And he has literally gotten old. The surrounding nations have kings. So Israel asks for a king in chapter 8. Samuel warns the people about the problem a king will bring, but they insist on having a king. Have anybody ever warned you of something that you really don't need, but yet you insist on those things? The Lord, the Lord assured Samuel that the people are rejecting God and not him. It is in chapter 9 that the Lord showed Samuel that Saul is to be Israel's first king. Saul, this tall and handsome man from the tribe of Benjamin, is to be the next king. And it is in chapter 10 that we make our arrival this morning that Samuel anoints Saul as king and presents him to Israel. Verse 26 and verse 27, closing out chapter 10, with Saul heading home and receiving support and constant companions while others oppose him and refuse to bring him gifts. And I think I need to be perfectly honest with somebody in this room on this 
morning is with you is that everyone has not received a true touch of God. I'm going to say it again. Everyone has not received a true touch of God. These men decide to walk with Saul and say that we are going to be brave, we are going to be fearless, we are going to be courageous. And they are doing this because they have changed their own way of being. And so now they are now walking with the king. And this morning, God has literally touched. They have received a touch of God. I want you to pay attention this morning because we're going to give acronyms of touch. So the first thing we see in this text on this morning is transforms. Text says, God, Saul, also went to his home in Gibeon, accompanied by a valiant men whose hearts God had touched. So the first thing I want to point out to you this morning is that a touch of God transforms you. A touch of God should transform you. What do you mean, brother preacher, a touch of God should transform me? A touch of God brings forgiveness of sins to those who repent and believe. It brings cleansing and power to those who yield themselves totally to God. The transforming touch of God makes everything new. It is in 2 Corinthians 17 that says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And all things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Can I tell y'all something that's in this room on this morning? It's what you used to be. You really don't, it really doesn't matter anymore. I'll say it to you again. What you used to be, that really does not even matter anymore. Yeah, I'm that lion that you used to be, that cheat that you used to be, that hard mother that you used to that backbiter, that backstabber, that backslider, that alcoholic, that pimp, that butcher, whatever you used to be. That just don't matter no more. All that matters is who you are right now. And I think I need to tell somebody that's online this morning. All that matters is who you are and what you are right now. Don't get it twisted, my brothers and sisters. That's why some of us right now need to change our inner circle because they can't see past what you used to be. All they can see is what you used to be. All they can fix their eyes on is that you used to smoke this. You used to drink this. You used to say this. They cannot see past your past. They can't see past your past. That's crazy, but it sounds good. They can't see past your past. But tell somebody this morning, baby, I got a new future. I got a new future on this day. He, I need to tell you, real transformation. Write this down. I'm going to say it slow. Real transformation requires real honesty. Mm -hmm. Real transformation requires real honesty. And if you want to move forward, get real with yourself. Yeah, I'm going to say it again. Real transformation requires real honesty. And if you want to move forward in life, get real with yourself. Tell somebody you need to keep it real with yourself. That's how you get real transformation. And a lot of us ain't been keeping it real. We've been faking, we've been fronting, and we ain't 
keep it in with. We just fake it. Tell somebody, I'm tired of faking it. Yeah. 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 I'm ready for a real transformation. And I was thinking on my way down here is that God formed us, though. Sin this form, deformed us. And then Jesus transformed us. Y'all yeah. better get that. God formed us. Sin deformed us. But then Jesus transformed us. And I need to tell somebody that's standing, that's staring at me in my eye. You need to thank God for the beginning and the end. It was God who formed you. But then it was Jesus who transformed you. You gotta thank God for the Alpha and Old Man. So, we see the transformations of tree. But now, we see a touch. That T stands for transformation. The O stands for o, ordained. Everybody say ordained. A touch of God ordains you. Many of us fail because we, many of us Christians, fail. Because we don't work for God. I'm going to take it easy on you. Many of us Christians fail because we don't work for God. Some of us think it's only the minister's job to witness to the unsaved and win them to Christ. Yeah, I'm talking to you. A lot of us think it's the preacher's job. It's the praise and worship leader's job. Yeah. It's the pastor's job. It's the priest's job. It's the deacon's job. I need to tell everybody that's sitting in the room that's looking via social media, that's looking online, it ain't just a preacher. It ain't just a deacon. It ain't just a deacon. It's, but it's all of our jobs. Yeah. I need to tell you wrong. You're wrong on this morning for thinking that way. The touch of God ordains all Christians into God's service. And all of us can share something for God. Say that with me. All of us can share something for God. What can I share? You can share a smile. You can share a prayer. You can share a scripture. You can share a helping hand. You can share an uplift. I'm preaching to me right now. All of us got something that we can literally share. You can share a scripture. You can share, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help. I know if God will draw thyself from me. Why the share now? Go, you can say, just say Jesus. Then you can share something with someone else. We all been called to provide a service for God. It is in John 15 and 16 that say, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. The good part about this scripture that I like it says that you should go and bring forth fruit. And I need to tell all of us this morning, a matter of fact, I need to ask you, when are you going to start bringing some fruit to the table? Yeah, what do you mean? Somebody said, what is he talking about? I'm not talking about fruit uh, that we eat, but I am talking about people. And that's why I want to ask you again, when are you going to start bringing some fruit to the table? And here it is, we're in God's house. And any time you're coming to someone else's house, my mama say it's just good to be nice. It's just good to be courteous. And so when you bring in, when you come to somebody else's house, you ought to bring a gift. And on this day, you ought to be bringing someone else.
to Christ. So, we see that a touch means transform. See that a touch means ordains. But then, a touch means unifies. Everybody say unifies. A touch of God unifies you. Many of our churches fail because their members do not work together. They, they are divided. Some pull in one direction and others in another direction. And any time there is division going on, hear me well today. Any time there is division going on, that means that subtraction is on the way. Y'all can get there. Any time there is division, there is subtraction going on. And that goes for all parts of our life. Some of our homes are just divided just like the church. Some of our job, our workplaces are divided just like the church. Yeah, some of our relationships are divided just like the church. And I need to tell somebody, anytime there is division, there is subtraction going on. And in God's house, we don't need any more division. We don't need any more subtraction. We need some pluses by God's name. And that ought to be a shout for somebody. God's name ought to bring about some pluses in our life. I'm looking for some pluses in my life. Is there anybody that's looking for some pluses and not some vanity in that? Come on here. Say, so, one thing three says. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Yeah, the touch of God brings harmony. Touch of God brings love. It enables us to accomplish God's work, the unity of the Spirit. And somebody ought to say that we we need unity again. We need to be unified again. And I can talk about unity all day. But we got to get back to being unified. And that's all I can think about. On my way here, 4 o'clock in the morning, driving by myself, riding alone, listening to gospel hits. And all I can hear was God saying unity. And he says anytime there is unity, there is some strength. Yeah. And I need to tell you, that's why I'm calling and I'm letting you know that the sanctuary, the sanctuary is where you get your unity. Yeah. And some of us are not even online. But the house of God is open so that you can gain your strength. So we see the transformation. We see ordained. We see unity. But now, here's the C. Conquerors. Everybody say conquerors. A touch of God allows us to be conquerors. A touch of God should conquer you. It is in Romans 8 and 37 that says, No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And as Christians, we give up too easy. <laughs> as Christians, we literally give up too easy. We throw our hands up in the air 
all in the town anymore. I can't tell somebody. I can't uh, give up just because such and such is talking about me. I can't give up no more because the church doors are closed. I can't give up anymore because I don't have a house. I can't give up anymore because I got a time, got a cup. Those are no reasons to give up. But I need to tell somebody on this morning that the touch of God gives us courage to conquer. It is in Philippians 4 and 13 that says Christ furnishes the strength which enables us to keep on keeping on. Once again, it is Christ that furnishes us the strength which enables us to keep on keeping on. And I think that's good news for some of us on today. Is that the only way that we can keep on keeping on is that it's through Christ who gives us strength. And every time I think about Jesus on the cross, there ain't nothing but strength for me. And I think that's what ought to keep us, keep us, keeping us going on from day to day. Here's the last and final point. You mean touch, transformation, ordains, unifies, conquers, then he brings about a healing. That's what a touch will do. It is in Matthew that says Jesus reached out his hand and touched this man. Says I'm willing, he said, be clean. And immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. And that's what's, what, what took place in our message on today is that God literally touched these boys who was walking with Saul. People didn't like Saul. Tall men didn't know who sent him. But everybody didn't agree with having a, a king. Some brought him gifts. And then some denied him. But then there were a couple of guys who said that we're going to walk with you anyway. And every now and then, God literally has to touch somebody in order for them to get on a straight and a narrow. And I'm closing now, but I'm telling you this morning, many have never experienced divine healing because of a lack of faith. And we cannot expect to please God or receive the blessings from Him without faith. 
believe if Peter and Andrew was here. They would simply tell you that it was Jesus that touched us. And now we are no longer the same. I just believe it was James and John. Yes, they would tell you if they were in the room that it was Jesus that literally touched us. And now we are no longer the same. I just believe it's Philip and Nathaniel was here. They would simply tell you that it was Jesus that touched us. And now we are no longer the same. Yeah, yeah. I just believe it was if Matthew and Thomas was here, they would simply tell you that it was Jesus, yes, that touched us. And now we're no longer the same. Yeah. And I just believe in James and Simon was right here in the room. They would simply tell you it was Jesus that touched us. And now we're no longer the same. Yeah. And I think I ought to pause and tell somebody on this morning, when God touches your heart, you will receive a whole new perspective yeah. on life. Do I have a witness in this room? Yeah. You stop living just for today, and you begin living a life of eternity. And I want to tell somebody, Christ purposely passed over, over the elite, yes, over the influential means of society, just to choose some men that nobody looked at everybody, looked down upon. And if Christ could choose somebody like those men, surely yeah. he can choose somebody like you and me. Yeah. And I need to ask you a question this morning. Aren't you glad that God chose you? Yeah. Matter of fact, aren't you glad that God touched you? Yeah. Matter of fact, aren't you glad that God woke you up and started you on the way. Aren't you glad this morning that God put food all upon the table? Aren't you glad that God gave you a second chance? And how did he give me a second chance? It was way back on Calvary. Yes, that God gave me a second chance. How did he give you a second chance? I hear you asking by way of Calvary. Yeah. It was when he allowed his son to take nails in his hand. Yeah. It was when he allowed his son to take a spirit in his side. Yeah. It was when he allowed his son to take nails in his feet. It was when he allowed his son to take a crown of thorns on his head. That's how I know that he gave us a second chance. And somebody ought to be shouting, telling Sam, saying, thank you, Lord, yeah. for a second chance. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for your touch. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power. Thank you, Lord, for your saving power. Thank you, Lord, for your alpha. Thank you, Lord, for your omega. Thank you, Lord, for your beginning. Thank you, Lord, for your ending. Did they anybody want to shout in the room? If you want to shout in the room, look up towards heaven and tell the Lord, say thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. You've been too good. You've been too kind. I just can't tell you enough that I thank you, sir. If I had 10,000 tongues, I'll just tell you thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You brought me, you brought me from a mighty long way. Ain't God all right? Hey. Come on, help me say it. Hey. Ain't God all right? Hey. If you know he's all right, why don't you say yes? Hey. Say yes. yes. Say yes. yes.
somebody is desiring your touch. Somebody is desiring your healing power. Somebody is wanting to see your movement on today. And God, they've tried everything. But the things that they have tried has not succeeded. But here it is now, God. They are trying. They want to try you. And God, some are literally afraid, God. They are afraid because of what others may say. They are afraid because some friendship may be broken. They are afraid this morning, God, because somebody is going to leave them. And God, we know that you're not a God of, of division, of hate, and animosity. But you are a God of love. You are a God of peace. You are a God of serenity. And God, at this very moment, at this very hour, we are crying out to you, God, to hear our cry. Matter of fact, hear our call. Hold our hands, God. As we reach out to you, God, don't let our hand go in the midst of this storm, in the midst of this pandemic, God, don't release us. Keep your arms around us. Now, God, forgive us of all the sickness that we have committed knowingly and unknowingly. It is for your name's sake we do pray. And we say it together. Amen. And thank God. I want to tell you that there are three ways that you can come to a Baptist church. By now, on Christian experience. We just ask that you would come while the blood runs warm in the ground. I want to thank you, Nancy, for coming and being a part of this worship service. I tell you, as we tell you every week, is that God can, God will, and God wants to make changes in all of our lives. It's offering time. And there are several ways that you can give if you would like to give. By way of tithing, by looking up Night Street Missionary Baptist Church. Also, by way of cash app. And if somebody would, they'll post those that cash app into our comment section and you can cash out the church. And then if you would like to mail in your offering, your time, you can do that also. We just ask that you be great stewards of the finances and the resources that God has given unto you. Listen, in order for us to keep doing ministry, in order for these church doors to remain open, it takes all of us giving and being on one accord when it, when it comes to our giving. That means everybody, we're responsible for our 10%. And you, if you don't have your 10%, you do the best that you possibly can. God knows your heart. Trust me, he knows your heart. But God also knows what you have and don't have. Do right by God, and God will do right by you. Amen. Listen, tomorrow is Message Monday. I need everybody to be online tomorrow for Message Monday. We got something really great in store for you on for Message Monday. I need you to please, please, print it, please be online for Message Monday. Tuesday, Sister Carter's right back in for Women's Bible Study, Women of the Night. Please log in to All Women Invite a Friend. And then on Wednesday, I got a special message for you on Wednesday. I need you to be uh, online. Please tag somebody, tag a friend, tag a cousin, a relative, whomever. You can get everybody online on Wednesday. It's going to be a good lesson. Also, I need you to pray for me this coming up week. Amen. Pray for me on Friday. I'm going to have some surgery. But I need you to pray for me because I'm going to pray for you. Amen. God bless you. And God keep you. As we prepare to leave this place, as we prepare to leave this place, I have a mission statement at Main Street Missionary Baptist Church. It's saving the lost at any cost. Our vision statement here at Main Street is a 
church, growing by God's grace. As I look amongst the, the room, I see so many empty pews, knowing that one day all of those pews will be filled again. And I'm speaking now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As I look around the room, there are so many empty pews. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that God is going to touch each one of those pews again. And I'll be able to see your face one of these days. My grandmother would say one of these days. She would say some glad morning. When this life is over, we'll all fly away to be at rest. I want you, whenever you feel the need, and you need to be in the sanctuary, you get to this place. Because the devil the devil is always seeking whom he may devour. Allow us now to go to God in prayer. God of grace and God of mercy. Lord, we've come to another end of our services. And here it is, God. We're black, we're back to the place where you called us to be. And we end this day telling you thank you and how grateful we are for your love and your kindness that you have shown upon us. Now, Father, we know that there are those out there who are literally afraid, who are literally, who are scared. And God, I ask now, is that you would build their confidence. Build their confidence right where they sit, in the midst of their homes. You begin working on them, working on their future plans, letting them know, God, that you are still God, and yet you are still able. You are the healer. You are the miracle worker. And God, we don't place our lives in anyone else's hand, but we place them in yours. God, continue to surround us with your angels. But then, God, we know if you keep us, we shall be kept. It is in Jesus' name. It is in Jesus' name that we all say it together. Right here in the same place on next.